a couple of comments. So the although we don't have very many of them here at the moment, but the people that were in Azov's class last year have an advantage on this problem that's perhaps unfair. So, so uh, I want to talk for a second about the function f of x, which is 1 over q, when x is p over q in lowest terms, and 0 when x is not rational. So this is a famous function. I'm going to give you a hint for why. Isn't it also why it's rational? I'm just doing it in single variable now. Oh. So I'm not doing your homework for you, but I'm setting you up so you can do it. So this is just this is just now one variable. I'm not doing the actual problem. Hint for why f is integrable and the integral. Zero. So, for, for those of you who have not yet tried working on this problem, um, the first thing to think about is what does the graph of this function look like? So notice you're talking about rational numbers in lowest terms. So if you have six eighths, you don't write it as six eighths. You write it as 3 fourths. So at any integer, I'm just going to do it between 0 and 1. But at any integer, the value of the function is 1, because any integer is integer over 1. At a half, it's a half. At the multiples of a third, it's a third, because 3 is prime. So you don't have to worry about lowest terms. At the multiples of a fourth that are in lowest terms, the value will be a fourth. So one fourth, not two fourths, three fourths. Fifths, five's prime again, so you get fifths. Call up one height, height one fifth. Sixths, you get one sixth, not two sixths, not three sixths, not four sixths, then you get five sixths. And you see, if you continue, you get some sort of fractally looking thing. My 24 100 class 20 years ago, when it was a different number, actually dubbed this the Christmas tree function. They thought it was like putting lights on a Christmas tree and making sort of a fractal pattern. Aesop calls it the ruler function. And actually, that's, that's the boring name. It's the ruler function because if you actually look at a ruler, the markings on the fourths are half the size of the marking on halves, which are half the size of the markings on ones, and the thirds are marked. So that, that is how rulers are marked, if you actually look at an old-fashioned ruler. All right, so this function is integrable, and the area under it, that function, is 0. So I'm going to give you the hint for what, I'm not going to write out the details, but I'm going to give you the hint so you can think about it for your homework problem that you're doing. Here's the hint. For any epsilon, I'm going to draw the line at epsilon over 2. And I'm going to ask myself, myself, how many of the dots are above that line? Finitely uh, many. So the first thing to prove is, one, given any epsilon, there are only finitely many x in the interval from 0 to 1 with f of x bigger than half of x. All the rest of the dots, all the other infinitely many dots are, are, are low-lying. Can you now see by the convenient criterion? We're done. That was integrable. What are you going to do with these finitely many bad points? 
make little columns containing them that are arbitrarily there? You can make a partition that that, that is built around each of the bad <coughs> dots and so that the sum of the lengths of those intervals is less than epsilon over 2. And the heights are certainly less than or equal to 1. So if you surround the finitely many bad points by little intervals whose the sum of whose lengths is less than epsilon over 2, then you win. So surround the bad points by intervals of total length epsilon over 2. So then you end up with a partition of the interval where the bad points are contributing at most epsilon over 2 to the upper sum, and these guys are contributing at most epsilon over 2. Whatever intervals are left over are contributing at most epsilon over 2 because the heights for them is epsilon over 2 and the sum of the lengths is less than 1. So, so we got this. Now almost fact down epsilon over 2. And then, and then, yeah. but, but it's interesting. In one case, it's coming from the height, yeah. and in the other case, it's coming from the bases. Right. Cool. Okay? So this is the intuition you need to attack number six, but that should help you. Any questions? Now that everyone's here. Mm -hmm. So by total length, you mean just the intervals for the bad points? Their length here I meant the intervals that are left over once you've taken out the bad points. Right? I mean, if, 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 you, if the bad points were giving you these, then I'm saying this, these intervals add up to less than epsilon, epsilon over 2. No, I'm saying what's left over. Don't you want what's, what's, what's not left over? Yeah. What you've used to be epsilon over 2? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I talked through that stuff, but I didn't write it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. I, I, you're right. I screwed it up. Erase. <laughs> Right. We have to read it up. <laughs> These <laughs> lengths add up to two epsilon. Or the sum of them is epsilon. The sum of all these lengths is epsilon over two. The heights are at most one. Okay. So the upper sum contribution from those is at most epsilon over two. Wait. So, so the sum of the heights is at most one? No. The okay. heights are all at most one, right? Oh, okay. Okay, end of that. But I didn't want to do this 25 times in office hours this afternoon. <laughs> and we're going to do about 15. <laughs> now it's only 22. No, now it's zero. Okay, so I want to go back to doing more examples with doing, setting up three dimensional integrals. And I wanted to start by redoing the picture I had at the end of the, yesterday's class because Dana showed me the right way to do it. No. No, that's, that's my, that's my Dennis said he couldn't be here, but he didn't want to tell us why. I'm sure he's up to no good. <laughs> so what we had on the board yesterday was a region omega bounded by, so I remind you we had, in the standard picture, we had this, and then we had um, So we had the line y equals 1 minus x here. So that we had, sorry, bounded by. So we had a, a plane on this side. Uh, it, was un, it was above the xy plane. And then it was bounded above by z equals x plus y. So this is, a, this is above, this is below. And this is on the side, laterally. And then I guess also by the planes uh, x equals 0 and y equals 0. Uh, 
right? So it's in the first octant, x is, x is positive, y is positive, z is positive, and you're underneath this point. And so I'm, I drew a picture that was sort of hard to picture. <laughs> and Dennis said, turn it around. So he, so. instead of drawing that perspective, send x going backwards into the board and y going backwards that way and z still up. And notice this is still a right-handed system if you're worrying about that x, y, z is still the same orientation. I just rotated x, y around so we can see this is, this is the negative <coughs> side here and that's the positive. So you changed our perspective. All right, so what does the picture look like? Let's do the same picture and notice how much better it is. X plus Y equals 1 becomes a line in the XY plane. Now, what we were saying yesterday was, if you look at the plane Z equals X plus Y, it tilts up in these directions so that when you get over here, you're <coughs> one unit up, and when you get over here, you're one unit up. And so that weird triangle I was drawing that you couldn't get the perspective on is now, that's the plane, and you're looking at it face on. So kudos to Dennis, can you, can you picture this now? Right, it's like, a, it's like a weird vending machine sandwich, where this is the top of the sandwich and the back is a, is a, is a the back is a rectangle, and you're looking at the stuff underneath this tilted plane and above the z equals zero. It reminds me like, like an old timey where they like amplify sound, kind of like in Shawshank Redemption. They have those. Oh, you mean the old speakers? Yeah, yeah. The woofers or whatever they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, so again, thank you to Dennis for doing what I should have thought of years ago. Can you all picture it? Uh -huh. all right, now what we were supposed to be doing was setting up the integral in a different order from what we had. So we were supposed to be setting up the integral with a y on the inside, and I think I put a z on the outside. Right? Yeah, we'll put so, proceed. How do we do it? Z goes back to zero to one. Yeah. Z goes from zero to one. Z goes from 0 to 1. Now what we really should be trying to do is picturing what you get when you project this thing into the XZ plane. Right? So we're, I really want to be drawing an XZ picture. You guys have convinced yourselves already that Z is going from 0 to 1. But what do I see if I take this thing and I plunk it into the XZ plane, which in this picture is here? It looks like you get this triangle. You have at least the triangle. Isn't it? Well, but all the surface, all the region is underneath this plane and above X. the X, Y. If you switch the Y, isn't the point that Y equal, uh, X, X equals zero? Yeah. Y, that, that's how it's right. So it's a square. It's isn't a it? square, I think. A square, yeah, it's a yeah. Or a rectangle, mm -hmm. anyway. No, it's a square. Uh -huh. It's a square, one by one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a square. Yeah. Let's see. Zero, one. One. Just looking at the point on above the y-axis, that so project. we were all agreeing that you would get this. Yeah, and then and you get the other all the y. y. But you're saying you get the other one as well. X equals well, zero. Like y y triangle y equals one. It's one. Nine. Triangle. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So this line. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the that green one. Straight line. No. That has to. It can't just collapse to that point. Right. Yeah, it's got to Because z is one on that whole curve. So in fact, and then the, the plane right. falls and so, the rest. So of this it. this triangle here is perpendicular. When you when you project it into the X Z plane, it's just the line. It becomes a, yeah, that's the line. It becomes this line. Those two triangles are perpendicular. So the so right. it fills in the other half of the square is just the surface. Okay, the I agree. Yeah. All right, now what? No, 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 we ain't done, folks. So you're saying x goes from 0 to 1 as well. 
here. For every fixed z, x goes from 0 to 1. Can I go back and ask if we want to be sure of that, we manipulate the equations so we get z in terms of x, right? So we have to eliminate y as we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so this one minus you take these two equations and you eliminate y. So that looking at those two equations is corresponding to looking at this line where the two planes intersect. Yeah, z equals one. And if you if you if you eliminate y you get z equals one. With no x constraints. So that tells you you have to have this in there. And then that's since that's the upper bound, you're filling it in. Alright, finish. And be careful. For each fixed point in this square, the whole square, what does y do? So I have to take a point in this square. You guys have told me that when we project this thing down in the x e plane. It depends on which half of the square it's in. Exactement. In fact, you cannot do it with a single integral. You have to split it into two. So I have to actually write it as the sum of two integrals. We can just split the innermost one into two, right? Not innermost, it's the inner two. This you have to change. So if you're in the blue right triangle, what does y do? So if you're, if you're starting with a point that came from this triangle, what does y do? You mean what does x do? No. Oh. We need that All right. Time out. All right. So first, let's do this. Z goes from zero to one. What is x to to do to be in this blue triangle? Goes from y to one. Be careful. Facing a z, what is x to? Zero to one. No. Z to one. Z to one. X goes from here to here. Now. Fix a point here, what does y do? From 0 to 1 minus x. I don't think so. 0 to x. From 0 to 0 to z. 1 minus x. Yeah, 1 minus x, that's right. So if you shoot it straight from there, it'll shoot out the back. Why do you look at it that way and not up and down to that x is fine? Hmm? Why do you look at it going across and not up and down? Like well, we're doing y, so we're going this way. He, mean the, he means in the other diagram. Yeah, that one. Why is it we because because the z is on the outside, so for fixed z, we're asking what is x do? Okay. And we're, we've decided we're in this piece. So what does y do? Zero to one minus x. Zero to one minus x. So going this way, where do I stop? So you're saying if I'm starting underneath here, I never interact with the top surface, but I keep going until I get to the back wall, which is the, the plane x plus y equals 1. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it goes from 0 to 1 minus x. However, if I start in this piece... Yes, that's not good. Now, first of all, what does x do? Zero to z. Zero to z. Zero to z. And now if I fix a point in that piece, so that's corresponding to starting above this plane here. Wait, so can you back up just, just a second? Um, how do we get zero, zero to z? It's, in, you know, it's interesting, the picture is clear, but I'm having more trouble seeing this than I have, usually have doing it the I other way. I think the Y is kind of squished in, it's not getting... Yeah. 
a perpendicular feel to it. No. It's getting more like a pizza than a quarter of it. Right. I mean, it's going there. It's fine. <laughs> hmm. tricky. Wait, down C is So y intersects when it's equal to z minus x, right? Yeah, when you're here. And then it exits X through the back again. Yeah, yeah one exits minus through X. 1 minus X. I agree. Hmm? Hmm. I don't see the Z. So now, it should be the case that when you're on the edge, we're getting the same limits agreed. Does that check? When you're on the line where Z equals X, Something's wrong. Yeah, it's from y to y. No, no, oh, no, it's, it's right. Just right. Yeah. When z equals x, then you're then you're at zero. Zero for y. Why are we, are we in this way? Because I wanted us to go through the exercise of thinking then, through it in different orders. Why, why didn't we do it with like integrating triangles? Because if you do a cross section. No, no, no. But your function here may be such that you can't do that. I'm just trying to do this as an exercise for you guys to think through how you set it up in different orders. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to be two in the graph? Because the y behavior depends on where, whether you're at a point in this rectangle, this triangle, or this triangle. Uh -huh. I mean, that's been, you're seeing that here because the limits are different. Okay. So, in, when you're starting underneath here, uh -huh. and you're starting in this <coughs> yeah. triangle, y is never being affected by this upper plane. It never, it never, when you shoot the ray through in the y direction, it's all underneath here. It never sees this upper limit. But when you're in the other triangle here, then you're exactly going to enter the region at that Sorry, yellow that plane and exit it. You're going to be underneath the yellow plane. You're going to enter it, go underneath it until you get to the back. So I encourage you to draw your own pictures with a couple of different perspectives. Oh, yeah. This, so you can see there, it takes practice, and this is an art form. It isn't just something where you can just say, here's the formula, I'm just going to write down a formula. You have to actually try to visualize it some. Obviously, most times in life, you're going to try to pick, you're going to have a homework problem on the homework I give you tomorrow, aside from web work problems, where you're going to want to pick the right order of putting the integrals in so that your life is as easy as possible rather than as hard as possible. So it's worth some thought to say, given this region, how do I want to order my iterated integrals so that the problem is easier for me? So in the original order that was in the book, which was ZXY, I think, or ZYX, then it was a single integral and it was a lot easier to do the problem. Okay? Should, should we do one more or should we move on? Are they all going to be that involved? No. But no, but I, but I am suggesting uh, you'll have a few web work problems starting tomorrow where there will be somewhere it's going to start from a single integral and it will turn into two and you have to figure it out. Right. I'm guaranteeing you that. But I'm doing this so that if you, if you look at a problem, you, you should think first about what order does the region look simplest in. All right, well, I'm going to do another one that's not quite like that. We'll see. All right, other deck. We're numbering them. This is number four. Probably that. Is it? Yep. Okay. So, omega bounded by. y equals 0, y plus z equals 4, and y equals 4 minus x squared. And I believe we can draw our usual picture for this and we'll be okay. So y equals 0, y plus z equals 4, so 
if I want to find a finite region, you're going to figure out that it's going to have to be to the right of y equals zero. It's going to be the stuff this way. You'll see that in a minute. Where's y equals 4 minus x squared? How do I draw that? It's a parabola. It's upside a parabola. Down, upside down parabola. Mm -hmm. So this is, as usual now, x, y, z. So y equals 4 minus x squared goes, has a point at four, distance 4, four there, and then, two. and then 2, and, two and then minus side. 2 this way. And it goes like this. But that's just the curve in the xy plane. What is it in 3D? A sheet. Parabolic sheet. It's a parabolic cylinder, right? Yeah. So you take, you take your parabola in the xy plane and you have it run in the z direction like that. Okay, so I'm not going to draw all that in yet, but I will shade it in some in a bit. Where is y plus z equals 4? It's like a triangle in three dimensions, right? So in the yz plane, plane, draw a point z equals 4 and then connect the, the two lines. I don't want to draw z equals 4, but in the yz plane, I want to draw that line. So it goes up to 4, okay. as Will said. It's going to form a contrarian yeah. yeah. And now it comes out in the x direction. Wait, I was, I, y is 4. But and z is 0. Z is okay. So it, it, the line continues. Oh, yeah, I wanted z equals 0 also. So it's, it's going to be bounded underneath by the xy plane. So this is going to be the bottom. And I'm going to have a region that goes up until it hits this plane that's coming this way. And it's also cut off on this side by the XZ plane. So can you picture what we should draw? Yeah, it's like a sheet running through the cylinder, through half of your cylinder. So this blue guy is a plane. This guy is a parabolic cylinder. So it's going to give you the lateral boundary that will encase it. And this guy will mm -hmm. cut it off on top. So the top mm -hmm. surface will start to look like a parabola bent over. So notice parabola. that I have a line in the plane lying over this line. That's it, I think it'll act. And then I'll have coming from the parabolic cylinder, I'll have these two lines. Is it bounded by x equals zero? No. It's going around the back. Z equals zero. Z equals zero is the bottom. X equals zero is in the middle of this thing. It cuts it in half. It has a piece in front and a piece behind x equals it's going to be like a wrapped curve. So what actually happens is if you intersect this cylinder with the, with the blue plane, what do you see? You get a curve in this plane that looks like this. Whoops, I bowed that out too much. So that that blue, that green curve is in the orange cylinder, and it's also in the blue plane. Got it? I didn't need Dennis for that one. All right, so let's try setting it up in different orders. Which way do you think is easiest? Yeah, project on x, y. Project on x, y. So the z on the inside, any particular order you want me to put here? Then dy. Dy, dy. Dy, dx. Again, a good idea because this region you're getting y as a function of x. And why should z go first? Sorry? Why should z go inside? Because they told me to project onto the x, y plane, so that would be the outside. And then you think for each point in this region here, in the region of the x, y plane, you go up from the bottom to the top. That looks pretty natural. So in the xy plane, what's the region looking like? Uh, uh, the parabola. Just the parabola. Yeah. And then cut off by y equals 0 there. No, y equals 0. <laughs> so x goes from? 
negative 2 to 2. For each fixed x, draw your y ray. y goes from? 0 to And now comes the fun part. Fix a point in that region in the xy plane and shoot your vertical arrow. Where does it enter? Where does it exit? 0, zero. zero. Everybody got it? All right, let's be brave. No. <laughs> Project a different way. But, so are we even worrying about the, what would we put? Well, so it depends on the problem. You would put a function in there depending on what the problem was about. But I'm, I'm doing this just to practice setting up the limits, because that you can see that's the hard part here. And then doing the integrals, assuming you know how to do integrals from Calc 2, the, doing the integrals is just bookkeeping. Y, Z, oh, y, Z. Triangle. Triangle, yeah. triangle in YZ? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So if I project this in the YZ plane, as you and other people have said, I have to get the colors right though. I get the line Y plus equals 4. I still have y equals 0, and I still have z equals 0, so I get this triangle. So start on the outside. y goes from? And for fixed y, what does z do? And now comes the fun. For each point in this back triangle here, this triangle that's in, sitting in the middle, I send a, an x-ray. <laughs> where does it enter? Where does it exit? Um, so the x-ray is coming parallel to the x-axis. So it enters at the back and exits at the front. So it would be 4 minus x. So you can see what's, the, what's, what's limiting the x is this parabolic cylinder that's wrapping around. So you're entering at the back of that parabolic cylinder and coming this way and exiting at the front. You're going from the negative square root of 4 minus y to the positive yeah. 4 minus y. Good. Because you always go from smaller value to larger value. That's always what you do with integrals. Left to right, bottom to top. Jackson, you okay over there? Yeah. Would you get a different answer if you switch top and bottom on one of the integrals, but not the other ones? You'd be off by a minus sign. Okay. Right, just like any time if you do an integral from a larger y, if you did an integral from 3 to 1, right, you'd be off by a minus sign. I'm just asking if it messes up the whole thing now that you put it into a bigger <sighs> integral chain. No, you're just, I mean, you you just got a minus way. sign wrong if you go from big to small. Okay. So it's just a matter of how many minus signs you're off by when you do that. <laughs> However, uh, try to get it right. I, when I was meeting with the high school AP teachers for several years, there's a guy, beautiful, probably one of the best physics teachers in the state, if not better. <coughs> and this is now going on the tape, which isn't good. But we had an argument because he was, there was a problem that had some physics set up. And I was making a point to the teachers of saying, make sure you get the integral going in the correct direction. And his answer was, do the problem. If you get a negative, you just change the sign at the end. And I, we had a fight about it. I think it's important for you to understand how to set the problem up correctly and not just say, oh, I know the answer's positive. I got a negative answer. It must be wrong by a minus sign. I don't like that. Because you might be wrong by other things and not just that minus sign. OK, everybody happy with this? Any questions? So you will be having web work fun with problems setting up iterated integrals and then some actually computing a few. Okay, so I thought what we should do today is actually start playing around with the eight possible scenarios with the iterated integrals and double integrals and when what can happen. And then tomorrow we'll do the actual proof of the theorem. So I want a table here of the eight 
possible scenarios with the integral of f and the iterated integrals. And so I've warned you guys that Frobenius theorem assumes all three of them make sense, and then it says they're equal. So basically I want to make a table here of Integral, double integral exists. Iterated integral exists in the x, dx, dy order. Is that board usually so loose? Yes, it's been driving me nuts. I think I'm going to try to get into the, a different room next year. All right, so. We did convince ourselves that there's eight possibilities, because you have two choices, yes or no, for each. So it's two times two times two. So they could all exist, and basically, can that happen? Yes, that's the situation where Fabini actually tells you something useful. Give me a sufficient condition for that to always happen, that all three of them make sense. There. F is continuous. So anytime F is continuous, or more generally, anytime all these integrals exist, Fermini's theorem says they're all equal. So now we could have a check here, and an X here, and an X there. We could have a check here and an x in one place and not in the other. Now I'm going to say these two cases are symmetric to each other because you're just switching x and y. So if you understand one of them, you understand the other. Agreed? Mm -hmm. that, the first case isn't necessarily saying it has to be no, I'm not. No, I'm just trying to give an example where this can occur. So these two I'm saying are basically the same scenario, so we'll only do one of them. I don't really want to do eight. I'd rather get down to six. All right, so these are the four cases where this exists. Now we need four x's. How, how are the two in yellow the same? Because I'm saying whatever works, just switch x and y. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. To go from one to the other. All right, now we can have x, 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 where none of them exists. You could have x and both the iterated integrals exist, or again, you have the symmetric case, I'm saying, where you can do x, check, check, x. If you know how to do one of them, you can swap x and y to the other. All right. So, any ideas and examples of these things? Can you give me an example? <laughs> Either from stuff we've done in class or stuff we're doing in homework, or we'll just have to make one up, I suppose. Well, in general, couldn't for the um, third and fourth, couldn't you just, for the third, couldn't you just say when fx, when the x component of f isn't integrable? All right, so can you give me an example where the double integral exists? when the integrated integral, right, so you're saying you can mess it up by just having that not make sense, right? but still be okay in this order. So do we have an example where it is integrable and that's the case? Can we do that e to the two, yeah, the normal Yeah. No, 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 I'm not asking where, where you can compute one but can't compute the other. I'm asking for existence. I'm, I want an example, whether we, we could compute it or not isn't the question. The question is, is there an example of a function where the double integral exists, but the iterated integral does not exist? That means something messes up the integral from existing, and not that you just can't compute it. And the homework, the Christmas tree function. So that homework problem with the Christmas tree problem is, is an example of one of these. Right. Where you are, so why. of course that's giving away the answer, but I believe you're going to discover, so we're gonna, I'm going to do a different example today. Um, but I believe you're going to discover that that function is integrable, but one of the iterated integrals exists and the other one does not. 
So that would be an example of this scenario. But we can make an easier example, much easier. How do we stop the integral, since Daniel suggested it, how do we stop the integral fixing y from existing for, for just one value of y? Louder? No, but I, I want an example now, so I'm going to actually make some room. Well, just let, just let f of x for that given y be 1 when x is rational and 0 when it's rational. There you go. So if you mess it up for one y, if for one value of y this doesn't exist, then we're dead in the water. Will that mess up the double integral? No. So for, so for let's, let's call this one um, star, <coughs> and I'll put star over here. Star meaning both of them in the box? Well, I'm just going to cross-reference and put the function over okay. here. So I'm going to do the first one, and then say by symmetry you can switch. f of xy is 1 when x is rational and y is 0, and 0 otherwise. So we've messed it up along here. So that if I try to do the integral of f of x0, when y is 0, I have a function that's rational, x just gives you 1. Irrational, x just gives you 0. That's not integral. Because right? every upper sum is 1, every lower sum is 0. So this does not exist. So that messes up this iterated integral, because you messed it up for a single y. However, the double integral is fine because you can isolate the trouble stuff in a partition that's very narrow here and make upper sum as small as you want and on all the rest of the rectangle the function is dead zero. And the other iterated integral in the other order, why are we okay? If I, if I fix x and integrate dy, why do I not have a problem? Why does it say? If you can make lower sums. It's either one at any point on there, and it's one all the way up. It's just going to be zero or it's one. Just gonna, yeah, it's just going to be a single. So that function either looks like this, or it looks like dead zero. If x is rational, it looks like this. If x is irrational, it looks like this. Both of those are integrable with integral 0. So I'm, this is the y-axis now, right? X is not rational. So these function, this is always e either 0 for all y or 0 for everybody but one value, and that doesn't affect the integral. All right, so we're done with this one. Yay. We're done with that one. What? Can you mess up everything? Yes. Can you do, I'll call that one dagger. Cone's the easy one, we've already done it. Go ahead. Uh, f of x, y equals 1 when x and y are in q2, 0 elsewise. Yeah. So that's going to have no double integral, and if you restrict to a certain x and integrate dy, it, it's going from 0 to 1 at rational to rational, that can send for x. So that's, I agree, that, that, does, that, that, was, that one does that one. So are rationals and irrational numbers going to be really big and important in all this? Well, what we're using about rationals and irrationals is that, that both sets are dense. Mm -hmm. So that any interval you take, no matter what, has both kinds in it. That's what's messing it up. All right, who's next? Let's do this one next. Let's call this one star star. Can you make the double integral exist but mess up both iterated integrals? Well, yeah, it's very similar to the star. Go ahead. You just have f of x, y equal 1 for the same condition. And then it also equals 1 for flip x and y. There you go. And zero otherwise. Good, good. 
So star star, you just make star symmetric, as Cameron said. So just do a function that messes up not just when y is 0, but when x is 0, mess it up too. OK. So that was easy. We're getting down to the gritty nitty. Can you think of a function that is not integrable, but whose iterated integrals in either order do exist? function that is, that each held x or y, the function makes sense. Well, what you want is it to screw up at finitely many points, which won't mess you up, right? Anytime you have a function that's zero most places, but one at a finite number of points, then it's still integrable and the integral is zero. It's when you have infinitely many points that are dense that messes you up. So that's, can you think of a function that's going to mess up only for, for certain x, for every x, only finitely many y's or no y's is it going to mess up. And similarly, switching x and y's. So I need a new symbol here, sharp. And the last one will be flat. Or b. No, it's flat. All right, natural. <laughs> then, then there's the standard music bad pun. Surely. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> All right. Wait, so, what's the pun? Don't be flat, don't be sharp, be natural. <laughs> All right, so. Wait, when do we do, sorry, when do we do? So, I'm after sharp. Have you? What if we do? That that we change one of the y's to not be z instead of z. There's a sharp in the water. That will only mess up one x then. You got a double star. We're trying. You're try, we're trying to do. We're trying to mess up the double integral here, but not mess up the iterated ones. So in your homework, hint hint hint. Have you discovered a function where the double integral didn't exist? because there were points that were showing up lots of places no matter how you partitioned. Like bands of irrational. Diagonal bands of irrational. Whoa. What do you mean? I, I can't, I don't know about like what you have for, but it's like X, y, bands of... But I don't know what you mean. You can't, oh, like, it's hard to create that because you'd have to, like, you know, there'd have to be, like, a ratio from irrational to rational. So, so I, I want to be able to make it so that on any vertical or horizontal line, I only have finitely many bad points. But still, the set of bad points is dense in the square, so it will mess up the double integral. Like, so my picture I want is bad points all over the place, but on any horizontal line, there's only finitely many. On any vertical line, there's only finitely many. Wow. Is that like A3? Aha. Uh -huh. So, or could we use this guy? Not quite as fancy as A3 with this work. But are you saying there's an infinite number of total points? Yes. That would work. But there's finite on each line? Yes. Yes, that works. So what if you do... Yeah. One over Q when x is p over q and y is s over q, both in those terms. So same q in those terms for some p, q, and s. Is it, and then zero otherwise. 
Do we agree that the set of these points is dense? If you take any little, if you take any little rectangle whatsoever, does it have to contain at least one point of this form? Can you find a point with the same denominator for both x and y in there? Because you can look at the relative lengths of the sides of the rectangle and just choose the smallest one and then see what power. Not power. Well, see what fraction of like 1 over 10 to the n, what n will make. Oh, I see. OK. It will be an increment small enough so that it has to show up. OK. So it's dense. Now, is it true that if I fix an x irrational, no problem? No points, no bad points. If I fix an x that's rational, how many bad y's are there? Well, that x has to have a certain denominator. And then there's only finitely many y's for that same denominator. Less than one. In the, in the interval from 0 to 1. It's no more than q minus 1, right? Right. And same thing, switching x and y. So this is very much like A3. OK. And uh, for the last one, the book has a somewhat subtle example, which I am prepared to tell you. But Brian Oakley last year suggested to me a far easier way of doing it. Was he in the class? Hmm? Yeah, he was in the class last year. So this is Brian's example from last, from last year. And it is easier than what I was going to do. So you can look in the book if you want to see the way I knew how to do it before. Brian said, take the example we just did. No. Um, 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 <clears throat> Yes. Take the example we just did where the double integral didn't exist. So we're trying to make the double integral not exist. So use, use the f from sharp modified to mess it up for one y. Well, you know how to mess it up so that when y equals 0, the x integral doesn't work. Do the same thing we did there. They could be when y is 0, let it be 1 when x is rational and zero when x is not rational. Well, then you've messed up the iterated integral on the, ins the inside integral when y is zero, therefore this, this iterated integral doesn't exist. But you've still got the x here because of having done this, and you haven't messed up the other iterated integral because of the same reason we gave for this. End of class.